Well, we're proud to have you in the house of the Lord today. <laughs> Shake off them heavy bands. <laughs> Lift up them holy hands. Let all of God's people say, praise, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Aaron's going to stand and give us a little testimony. Yes. Yes. And uh, I'm just so so grateful for what he's doing in my life. Uh, just got a new job in Snyder. So I'll be back. Glory. <laughs> and I got a house just about fully lined up. So just waiting on the word to say go ahead. Yes. It's exciting, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Woo! I love it. The Bible says, this is Hebrew chapter 13, verse number 4, that marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is undefiled. So precious. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing that the Lord set up for humanity and it's ours for the taking, and it's a wonderful thing. Okay, here we are in Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to start in verse number 18. I thank you for the scripture. Man, that's good. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 18. We're going to read down through 29. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and a tempest. So tell me about the mount. What was the name of it? Sinai, that's it right there. The Sinai Mount. The sound of a trumpet. Do you remember that trumpet? It sounded so loud and loud and loud and loud until the people were going. <laughs> and finally Moses spoke and God answered him right there out of the, out of the top of that mountain. Hmm. The sound of the trumpet and the voice of words. Which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. They were so scared that they said, we, we can't stand it. It's more than we can stand. You remember the scripture in the last days whenever people realize that they've missed heaven and they begin to cry and they throw their, their gold and their silver to the bats and the moles and that here's their cry. Hide us! I don't know if you've ever seen them little blue books. There's a picture. Then people are running, they got their hand up and they're saying, Hide us! From him that sat upon the throne. They're scared to death, but it takes more than a hand to cover up God. Woo! Get ready. Stay ready. They could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. So terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear, and notice this word, quake there's a shaking going on but you are come unto Mount Zion unto the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem the armies have not gathered around this place (laughs) this is the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels that means there's more angels than are countable To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse him not that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I will shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made 
that those things which cannot be shaken. Would you say that word with me? Cannot be shaken. May what? They may remain. Wherefore, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God, notice this word, acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is all love. He is. Woo! Can you believe what the Bible says? Our God is a consuming fire. Lord, we, we bow in your presence. We thank you. We love you, Lord. Let us get a hold of reality in such a way that we're not diminished or carried off or turned away, Lord, that we have recognition where we're headed and we know in our knower what we found in Christ. Bless the reading of these words and Lord, let it impact our lives. And we say thank you in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. I want to talk to you about this thought this evening, receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. If you look at verse number 26 or 27 and 28 of our text there, Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, see the fact that removing those things that are shaken. So whatever can be shook up is going to be removed. I don't know if you've looked around at the church world lately, but years ago, almost without precedence, the Methodist Church brought in ministers that were bisexual. Some of them were complete homosexuals as ministers in their churches. No wonder that just a couple of years ago, the thing imploded. And they had to make a decision whether they was going to, the people that was there had to decide whether or not they was going to believe what this says or believe what the Methodist church was going to say. And they said, we open our doors to ministry to people that are completely out of character with what this Bible says. And our Methodist church here took their sign down and took the fire off that represents the Holy Ghost and started basically a new work. Yeah, they said you can have the building, but you have to get that, you have to get the sign down. If you won't, if you won't go with us and say that sodomy is right, then we're gonna, we're gonna make you take our name down and our emblem of the fire. That, who would have ever thought in the 60s, in the 50s, in the 70s, in the 80s, I, I, I grew up in the, those years, I mean, that, that would have never, never even been considered. And it, it can only happen when this kind of stuff happens. Whenever the Lord said, he's going to shake everything that can be shaken. Friends, it doesn't matter if it's the Assemblies of God, the Church of God, the Free Pentecost, the Methodist Church. Nothing is going to stand except what is tied to the authority of the Word of God. Nothing. Man, man cannot make this thing work. And some... Uh, organization. In fact, the assemblies, I know more about them because I've been in the assemblies all my life, but they started out saying we do not want to be a denomination. We want to be a fellowship of like precious faith and give people the opportunity to believe what the Bible says. And that, that's why the fundamentals, the 16 fundamentals are just, I mean, every one of them are just Bible-based right down. When you read the 16 fundamentals, it talks about the one true God. Help me. Yeah. 16 fundamentals talks about the rapture, talks about divine healing, talks about baptism, water baptism. It talks about... Uh, Taking the Lord's Supper, how it, how it should be taken, all, all of that. And it's all a scripturally based what actually happened out of the Bible. As long as we stand with this, whatever name we call ourselves is going to be all right. Because this, this will not be shaken. Do you remember what the Bible says about heaven and earth? 
shall pass away, but what? My word shall not pass away. It's not going to happen. And so to receive a kingdom is to ingest what the Bible says, is to take it in. In Hebrews chapter 12, and so I, I want to talk to you, this is the first thought under receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken is the removing of those things that are shaken. We're already talking about it, and it, it's happening all over the place. I read a book that was put out, and I, I don't actually know where it come from. I should have been a little more diligent, but we was in a, in a class and in that book, the writer of the book, and it, it come down through, from a class, through a class that was taught by the assemblies of God. And in that, he said, if you want people to come, get you a person that's a sodomite to teach, and that's why you get them in. They didn't use that word. They used a homosexual. Now, listen, I'm not against the people that's lost their way. I don't care if they call them sodomites, homosexuals, adulterers, uh, liars, thieves, whatever. None of those things matter. That, that, that's not what you are if you come to Jesus. If you come to Jesus, that is past. Those things are actually talked about and forgiven in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He talks about them in 9 and 10 and says, that's what you were, but you aren't that no longer. So I'm not picking on one sin. Any sin is destructive and any sin will take you down. It doesn't matter if it's the sinless of God or whoever. If you can buy into that. So I don't know if our teacher had, hadn't seen that or whatever. But anyway, my eyes like, a, you know, when I'm reading books besides this one, I don't know, maybe three or four pages out of a 200 page book is about all I can say amen to. And the rest of it's like, ah! it was so opinionated. And I, I, don't, I don't want to be where I can't be taught nothing, but if you're going to teach something, teach what the Bible says. If you get away from that, you're just, uh, you're just kind of saying, well, this, this could have happened. Well, so, so the world could be square, but they figured that out a long time ago. Hey. <laughs> yeah. And so when you think about the removing of those things that are shaken, anything that's not tied to the eternal word of God is going down anything and if we progress if we call it progress it's really regression anytime we step away from a biblical truth we're driving the stake into the heart of our belief system so I, I want you to I want you to know what's out there and what to stay away from look at Hebrews chapter 12 verse number 12 he talks about here we're going to read down 12 through 15 Hebrews chapter 12 verse number 12 wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the what kind of knees the feeble knees. So if you're kind of wobbling around, me and Brother Rosas was talking about how to get up on these steps good without falling. <laughs> I said, well, you got to get over it to get you a running start. <laughs> and don't never slow down. Don't wait till you get there and then go to stepping up. Make it up your mind. I'm going blown to the top. <laughs> yeah. Lift up the hands that hang down. So what's he saying? If you see somebody that's kind of edging away from what the Bible says, love them enough to say, hey, Let's just look at truth and see where that puts us. Amen. And then step, step back into righteousness. I was talking the other day to some folks and they said, well, you know what? I know we're going to be with Jesus, but said, I just don't believe in the rapture. I said, well, the word rapture is not actually in the Bible. And it's not. What rapture means is the catching away. But the Bible over and over talks about us going to meet Jesus in the air. Amen. And he said, I know about what that says there in First Thessalonians, but he said, I just write that off. If you can write the Bible off, you've lost the impact of Scripture. The Bible says that all of this was written and it was given by the Holy Ghost to men that wrote what the Holy Ghost spoke to them. They would not deviate or offer any kind of an opinion. They waited for the Holy Ghost to speak and as he spoke, holy men of God pressed into action by the spirit wrote down what the Lord said and we have a Bible with 66 books in it and they all fit together and they're written by hundreds of different people it's incredible so when you look at that you know that what we have is a transcript from God and it's the way to eternity with Christ so those that struggling we lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and we go back and say, let's just see what the scripture says. I can't tell you how many fights 
I could have gotten into with my mouth in the jail because a lot of those guys know enough to pick a fight an argument I, I guarantee you brother Ro, uh, Ross has seen that over and over and I said well <clears throat> this is the way I stopped every one of them let you see what the book says I tell them where to go they read it and I said now you tell me wow 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 I said well read it again then if you're that troubled up just read it <laughs> they get that out they read it again whoa <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's about cussing, hating. It doesn't matter if it's about living in adultery, shacking up, whatever you want to call it. They used to call it swinging. You know, while they're trying to take off what that means to God in this gospel, they're trying to, they're trying to make it look like it means nothing. Like lying. I was telling the guy, I said, well, I never done all that stuff. And I said, well, all you got to do to go to hell, just be a liar. You don't have to, you don't have to be a murderer or a hater, nothing. Just lie. Just lie like a dog. Do you remember Revelations, what it says in the last book of Revelations? Yeah. That all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. So if you claim Christianity and won't live it, you're lying like a dog. You're called a hypocrite. And now you say, you're beating us up, Brother Danny. Oh, no, I'm not beating you up. I'm just telling you that we're headed into a kingdom that's going to be forever and ever and ever. And if you can be shaken now, get it fixed. If there's something, you know, if you got a bad tire on, it's going bump, 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 bump. <laughs> back up there and get some balance and our balance sheet is right here it is the divine word of God that gives us a clean shake on where to go so I'm talking to you about a, uh, receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken I asked Connie this question several times yesterday I said okay tell me what you think about and somebody told you they didn't believe that Jesus was actually going to take us to heaven what, what would you do so we, we visited about it yesterday. Uh, not to be hard, I just want to have my gun completely loaded. If it'll hold uh, 15 rounds, I'm going to put all 15 of them in there. And uh, my mind's pretty small, so if it'll hold 10 rounds, <laughs> let me get them all down. <laughs> Everything I can punch in there, Lord, let me get in there where we can, we can say what truth actually means. So he talks about here, lift up the hands. If you see people struggling, help them. Look at verse number 13. And make straight paths for your feet. So what does that mean? Does that mean whether it's any road to go up? I, I told uh, Savannah and Rebecca that, uh, maybe not, not Rebecca, but she went up here. I, tell, I told Savannah, I said, the, the song y'all picked out for the altar service was so precious. Because it, it, it talks about bring back the new again. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a new pickup, a new horse, a new sewing machine. I wouldn't need one of them, but I'm, come on now. <laughs> A new cook stove, a new mixer, a new bedroom suit. What happens? What about a new dress or a new pair of shoes? I'm going to get down to these ladies here in a minute. What about a new pair of shoes? Yeah, I see them smiles coming out there. And the men said, what about a new gun? <laughs> ah, yeah. What, what's wrong with us? It doesn't matter if you've got 20 and you look around and say, you know, I like that out there too. <laughs> Have you ever went in a woman's closet? No. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I'm, I'm shutting up. Okay. Here we go. I'm talking about receiving the kingdom that cannot be shaken. What do you say? Make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is, notice this word, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Does Jesus pour his blood out that people could go to hell? Never. His will is God's will that all be saved. So if you see somebody limping along, not making it, you know, if they come in with a sad face and leave that way, we need to pray. I mean, say, you know what? There's got to be a way around this. Let's talk about it. Let's pray it through. And then you can go home and say, guess what? I got me a win instead of a failure. And I'm not limping quite as hard as I I got that rock. Amen. Yeah. They used to sing a song. Get that rock out of your shoe. <laughs> Woo! What about it? Quit limping around here. Let's stand up. Make straight path for your feet. Let that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. So these are cautions he's speaking to us. Look at verse number 14. Follow peace with all men and, and holiness. Holiness, man, how do you define holiness? Holiness means I'm all in. That means from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet to everything I say and do is inside the perimeter of God's will. If it's not, I cut it off. Anything outside of that's got to go. Hang on to it. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. 
These are all cautions for us. Looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. And so what this scripture here is talking about offense. If I ask you for a hand raising of those that's been offended, almost everybody in the church could easily raise their hand. But is offense a way of life for the Christian? No. What do we do with offense? That's it. That's the word. Whenever people offend us or try to offend us or the devil uses them to offend us, we recognize the source. It's really not the person. It's the devil that prompts that kind of stuff. And so instead of being offended, we forgive. Wow. That way you can go home and you're, you're happy. You're, you're in love because you say, I, I got by it. It's, it, does, it doesn't mean that to me because the Lord has given me grace past that. Because if you want to be offended, get ready. Before the service is over, somebody will knock the chip off of your shoulder. <laughs> So why not just say, I'm not going to, come on, let's say it together. By the help of God, I'm not going to be offended. I refuse to be offended. No, don't do it. Don't let it happen. You think you know offense, you don't know nothing. Our pastor, when we first got saved, Connie's dresses was a little bit short. We, did, we just got saved. I mean, we lived in the year of many skirts. Maybe not a year. I mean, it was like 10 years. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how you say it. How do you say it? I don't know. Anyway, we got saved. She didn't have no more clothes. We didn't have no money. We just had what we had on. <laughs> we were both young, just kids, you know. Anyway, my pastor knocked on the door one morning, like on a Monday morning after church. He said, uh, <clears throat> Brother Danny said, your wife is wearing her dresses too short. He come to my house. My third, my first thought was, "What are you doing looking?" I mean, you know, you have a smart aleck inside of you too. My next thought was, "Did he care enough to say, I'd like to see you. We'll help you." He didn't bring no money or nothing, but he just helped me make a step. So we, we can fix it. Yeah. And guess what? We found out how to get one dress that was long. <laughs> and after a while, she made her a dress or two. Ah, we can get it done. Or we could have walked out and said, I'll tell you what, that there clothesline preaching. Well, I'll tell you what, when you quit preaching on the clothesline, if something broke too. Help me. Don't matter if it's man or woman. You ought to look in the mirror once in a while before you walk out the house. Some folks wouldn't wear that stuff in the bed, let alone outside. <laughs> Come on now, I'm talking to you. What are we going to do? Look diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any rude bitterness springing up trouble you. We went God addressed it to get mad. Got over it. Whoa, the call of God carried us by our trouble. And thereby many be defiled. What if we went to church and said, you know what our pastor did? He, he called me. Come over to my, he didn't tell God, he told me. I said, I ain't wearing them. I was like, I ain't wearing them many skirts. <laughs> what are you telling me for? You think I'm the boss? Yeah, sir, come on now. Man up a little bit. Yeah. So <clears throat> when you think about the law, the law came on the back of man. If you listen to the people that talk to Jesus, who do they brag on? <clears throat> Moses. Gave us the law. Jacob gave us the will. They, they go down through. Because the law came in on the back of man. Moses, who did, what does he do? He goes up on the mountain and gets the law from God. But something about, if you go back to uh, like, uh, let me look here just a minute. Back to verse uh, 18 and 19. For you're not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them. 
He said, when we come to Jesus, we get a different kingdom. That's what he's saying. We're not on shaky ground. And what made the, what made the law so shaky was it was all about ceremonial law. It's about washing. It's about animal blood. Stuff that could never, in fact, the Bible says it could never bring us to perfection. It was never intended to. It was only a resource until Jesus could go to Calvary. And that was in an appointed time. And so all the years of mankind, 4,000, all those years, sins were stacked up. But guess what? The cross become the clearing house. Woo! All them sins that had been prayed over from righteous Abel plumb down to Abraham, Isaac, all them, all them sins was cleared out in one shot when Jesus spilled his blood on Calvary. Woo! Glory to God. And so we've, we've got a different kingdom. I, w- I was uh, looking at this passage in, uh, I think it's in, let's see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, this is going to be Exodus chapter 19, verses 1 and 2. In the third month when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt. That's not very long to be free, is it? Three months later after they leave Egyptian bondage, they run across the sea. The same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and there Israel camped before the mount. And when you think about this mountain, I, I, I looked up some stuff on it. They said that Sinai is 7,947 feet above sea level. So they've been on a climb all the way from the Red Sea for three months. They've been climbing at a rate, when they got there, I don't know how far it is, but they'd, they'd climbed almost 8,000 feet away from sea level. And so I was looking at the ground around Mount Sinai to see how high the mountain was from where they were standing. And the mountain is almost a half of a mile to the top of it. And so when God descended on that mountain, you can see why it was wobbling (laughs) and belching out fire and flame. In verse number 18, it kind of gives us a, a little picture of it. And this is what Hebrews is talking about. It was a shaken kingdom that was put into the hands of the Israeli people. You're not come into the, oh, no, we're talking, I'm talking about 18 of, I'm sorry, we're, we're, I'm talking about number 18 of Exodus 19. Exodus 19, verse number 18. That almost says the same thing. And Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain Quake. Can you imagine a half a mile high when God descended on that mountain in fire and the smoke and fire belched off of the top of that mountain and that trumpet starts sounding until the people are screaming and running and said, we know not to touch it, but we cannot stand to hear that voice. We're so afraid. They beg, they said, we can't stand the word of God. You go. And so that's why Moses goes and talks to God and brings down with him what we know as the Ten Commandments and all the ordinances. It was a shaken, it was a shaken kingdom that was received. It stood in litigation, animal blood. The washing of cups, how far you could walk on the Sabbath and just every little intricate detail was, he was mobiled or immobile by what the law said. Aren't you thankful for the grace of God? And that thing teetered and tottered all down through Israel's history until Jesus came. Woo! Man, he came and he brought so much life to us. Some of the king, if you look at a, Romans chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. I'm sorry, you're going to give me a, you can shoot me here in a minute after church. (laughs) Hebrews chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. (laughs) Which was a figure of the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. So the law, as strong as it was, it could not fix the inside of the man, the conscience. You come guilty, you leave guilty. Yeah. 
which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and cornal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. And so, you know, when somebody imposes on you, it means they've stayed longer than you want them to. Invitation is one thing. Imposing is another. Connie and I had a family moved in with us and we was trying to help him. You know, we're just young Christians. He was a uh, cousin of mine and we were just kids and he was about, I don't know, 35, him and his wife. And I come home one day and she said, they've been there about three or four weeks. He couldn't work. Maybe the real deal is wouldn't work. And uh, they had one boy about, I don't know, he was four or five years old and he stood up and urinated on the couch. And uh, when I come in, she said, no more. I can't go. She's staying home with them. I was at the feedlot and glad to get away. <laughs> so I said, well, y'all's tenor here is over. <laughs> you go out together, you brood together. They had four or five kids. And I said, we love you. They went to church with us as long as they was there. But when they left, there's a raising and cussing. <laughs> Matter and Pharaoh. Because <laughs> if we were Christians, we wouldn't put them out. <laughs> Yeah, so when you think about something imposed on you that you're made, you do it or you die. Do you remember what happened if you, if you picked up sticks on Sunday? They stoned you to death. If they caught a man with somebody else's wife, they killed the man and they killed the woman. I mean, all, I mean you talk about the shakenness. You, you, what, what if somebody just brought a... Right an accusation against you got somebody to say it with you all of a sudden man you're gone you're dead so you can see the shakiness of it Daniel talks about those kingdoms in Daniel chapter 2 verses 44 and 45 he talks about the kingdom from Nebuchadnezzar plumbed down through the Roman Empire in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. What's he saying? We're headed for an unshakable kingdom and the kingdom that shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces the old kingdom and be consumed. He's going to consume these kingdoms and it's, his kingdom is going to stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands. Speaking of Christ, he's the rock. That it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. And the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. So not only physically... And, but spiritually also both of those kingdoms the kingdom of man and the kingdom of the law is going to, it's going to come down it's a shaken kingdom and we're going to get something that's going to last forever and ever there were two gardens in the Bible in the first one the garden of Eden man sinned and it was 4,000 years later that in the, another garden that sin was finally met with the will of God through Jesus Christ. As Jesus poured out sweat like blood, the scripture says that he says, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And that unshaken kingdom started for us right there at, at Calvary, at Calvary's willingness, at the willingness to do that. The second thing I want to talk to you about is the establishment of the enduring kingdom, the one that's going to last forever. Woo! Back in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 21. I'm trying to keep the right one now, Sister Leatherwood. Thank you. Thank you for running them scriptures down for us. So terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are not come unto, but ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God. Now, if you get that down in your heart, that when you, when you come to Christ, he brings you before the Father, and he's in his city. God has a city. You remember we sang that song, Oh, that city, old Mount Zion? Yeah. Though a pilgrim, yet I love thee still. Here's the promise of that. And unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn. So all of those souls that's been gathered down through the ages, they're there. They're waiting for their bodies, but they are there with Christ, which are written in heaven. 
that would be the Lamb's book of life and to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect so what's he saying when you come to Christ the door is open for you to go straight to God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ we have access to a kingdom that cannot be broken I was talking to the men in the jail today nine times in John chapter 6 it talks about Jesus being the bread and so in the, in the four services I did in the jail today, every one of them talked about Jesus Christ being the bread of life. And so I was telling the last bunch, there was a good group of them come out. I said, I want you to think about this. If you can get this down, the problem can be fixed. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never hunger thirst I said so what he's saying is what happens and how often do you eat bread and they said every meal if I can get it I eat bread every meal now you may be on a diet and you can't have bread but you think about it I'll eat yours And I said, and so what he's saying, what, what happens when you get full, when you get plum full and you've eaten all, all you can eat and you're full, what do you want to do then? And one of those boys said, I won't take a nap. <laughs> Three hots in the cot. <laughs> I said, oh, I got you. You want to take a nap? I said, okay. Now think about this way. What if you're so full of this bread from heaven? You've taken in Christ and you're so full of Christ and sin comes by and you have opportunity to take in some more. What are you going to do if you're full? You're not going to partake of sin. And if you eat bread every day, three times a day, how often should you be eating the bread Christ? Every day. And so I said, here's the question I want to ask you. How come you're in jail? One of those boys over there on the left side, he said, because we didn't eat enough bread. <laughs> I said, you got the right answer. And here's the truth. If you have more of Christ than on Christmas and Easter, if you eat him every day, you'll never go back to sin. Because he said, they that, they that come to him will never hunger. And what he said, it's not that you won't want a steak or a fried egg. You won't want sin. Your woner stops wanting sin. You're so full of Jesus, you want righteousness. You want love. You want joy. You want peace. It's delicious. You love the pleasure of being in the house of God. You want to pray. You want to read your Bible. You want to bring somebody to church like Tay did this morning. I'm so proud of you. Woo! And like witnessing, yes. Man, the, the want to completely changes. You're so full up to here, you want nothing else but Christ. So what's the cure? More bread. More. More bread. I love I told that man, said, you got it, you got it. I can, I can see, I can see the jailer and they're like, <laughs> but you know what? After four rounds, you can't get away from it. The gospel permeates the being. Have you ever got gasoline on your hand? You can smell it for two days. <laughs> you know why? It goes on the inside. Yes. So I'm saying, Lord, sick him, Lord. <laughs> go, go. Let him eat the bread of life. The establishment of the enduring is what we're talking about here in these verses. This general assembly's come right into the very town city of God almighty and we've got to approach him in repentance and he said because of the blood of my son you are forgiven Woo! and you got a clean slate look at verse 24 and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel what does Abel do he kills a lamb a goat a heifer, something like that, and offered a blood sacrifice. But there's something better. There was nothing better for him then, but it's better now because Jesus has gone to Calvary. Verse 25. See that, see that, you, refuse, that you refuse not him that speaketh. 
For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, speaking while Jesus was here, they couldn't get away from that. Much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Hang on to the righteousness of Christ. The establishment of the enduring is there. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 9. Can't wait to get some of that cornbread, can you? <laughs> yeah, got to get some of that pond down. <laughs> yes. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you in desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Does that accidentally happen, being fruitful? No. The only way you can be fruitful if you're full. You remember the psalmist saying, he anoints my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell where? In the house of the Lord. For he's talking about a kingdom he's looking toward. We're looking back to that kingdom that was bought for us on Calvary. A kingdom that will not be shaken. And when you get full of the bread of Christ, fruit's going to come out on you all over. You won't be sullen and tragic and oh, there's some other words. Yeah. No. you new creature. Here we go. That you might walk worthy. Okay, look at verse number 11. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Wow. That's different, ain't it? We can wait. We can pray. We can still wait. And it's, it's going to be joyful. We're just hanging on to God. Look at verse number 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light. In other words, he's fixed us to where we can receive this kingdom that cannot be shaken. Heaven and earth will pass away. His word will never pass away. So you stay full of the word of God. Guess what you've done? You have fixed yourself on some of that. I was trying to think, of, what's that stuff they, they can't shoot through? Yeah, Cavalier, is that it? Cavalier, Cavalier. They said that them, mosquito, uh, them, them spider webs was two times stronger than Cavalier. If you had the same, same thing as that spider web, pretty strong stuff, ain't it? What about this here? He set us up. He's made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He's fixing to talk to us about the kingdom just a minute. Look at 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has, look at this, translated us where? into the kingdom of his dear son. I told the guys, all you've got to do to win this race is stay full. <laughs> Get full of the bread. Stay with the bread. Stay full, so full. There's no more sin. So there was a, a gentleman there that could speak no English. I was trying to get this down to him. I was trying to think, Lord, let me have the right words, please. A word he can understand it. So he's looking at me intently. And I told him in Spanish, I said, Yo pensé que este dice, es cuando está lleno con la Cristo, no quede más pecado. I said, I think what this is saying to us, that when we're full of Jesus or Christ, you don't want to sin no more. You don't want it. Well, man, if you don't want it, you're going to get out of jail. If you don't want it, you're not going to go back to jail. You're going to be free. Yeah. You're going to start a new life. Yes. And here's the unshakable kingdom. It is, I, tell him, I tell that girl today that, that I carried to the motel. I said, if you want to live for Jesus, dope will never control you again. Jesus breaks every fetter. Every fetter. I said, our church is full of people who had all kinds of trouble. But guess what? Bigger than our trouble is God. This unshakable kingdom is our kingdom. We're bought into it. It's not a maybe so or what if. It's a yay and it's an amen. And it's going to last. So receive the kingdom that can't be shaken. Woo! If you're being watered around, you don't know if you want to live for God or not. There's already something broke. You need to get back to the Bible. You learn so much into the devil can't run you over. And you can start with that wonderful scripture in Psalms 119 verse number 11. That's it. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What about verse number 9? Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed thereto according to what? 
according to your word. Friend, I mean, you can go through, if you just had one chapter in the whole Bible, that, that right there has got about 100 and, I don't know, 180 verses or something. It's way up there. Anyway, you learn all of them. You can whip every devil comes out of hell. And you can do it because all you've got to say, I know what the Bible says. It's written. Jesus didn't pull out a bazooka when the devil jumped on him. He just said these words. Yes. It is written. And the devil, he changed his tactics. He started again. And Jesus, when he, when he got through, he said, it's written. He takes off again. He changed his tactics. He starts one more time. He said, it is written. And so what is that? That's boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he's gone. Yes. And the same kingdom that Jesus won over for us, it's ours for the taking. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 23, verse number 42, Jesus so kindly says to the thief on the cross or the thief is talking to him and this is his statement to Christ and he said unto Jesus Lord remember me when thou comest where into thy kingdom I think it's awesome that that man knew that the kingdom of God was never going to be taken down that even death could not stop the entrance of Christ into the kingdom of righteousness. Woo! That's powerful faith. And because of that, he gonna, we're going to get to see him one of these days. I want to say, which one are you to see? What about all the hands in there going to go up? <laughs> I ask you guys in the jail all the time, I say, hey, how many of y'all thieves? And there'll be two or three of them, you know, that honest. I said, the rest of you lying probably. <laughs> oh, they get there to me, but we have it round and around. <laughs> So the thief, he remembers, Lord, remember me when you come to your kingdom. And what does the Lord say? This day. Hey, I'm going to put you in the kingdom, can't be shaken. They're going to kill you right here. You're fixing to die. But guess what? You're headed somewhere the hell can't get you. Woo! This day shall thou be with me in paradise. Glory. And in Ezekiel chapter 21, verse number 27. He talks about the shaking of these kingdoms and how the Lord God, how God's going to take these down until he comes whose right it is. I've always loved this scripture. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. So he's talking about from the top of the head, the golden head of Nebuchadnezzar plumbed down through the toenails at the end whenever the the Roman Empire, the old Roman Empire sticks his head back up. That's where we're headed right now. Those ten, those ten toes, they're part of iron, part of miry clay. They're trying to blend the whole world together, but it says they don't like each other. You can't blend the, the miry clay with the iron. Yeah. It said all of a sudden the rock hits the image in the feet and it's gone. And here's, here's God's word to Ezekiel talking about that. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. It shall be where? No more. That's all the kingdoms that can be shaken. And then I'm going to do something. Until he come whose right it is. And I will give it unto him. This is that unshakable kingdom that we have through Jesus Christ. Satan has put his best foot forward to bring down the unity and the hope that we have in Christ. But our kingdom is of God. And the cross of Christ can bring the kingdom to us that is indestructible. Verse 44 of Daniel chapter 2. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all those kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So here we have the kingdom, the physical kingdom of God that we can actually see with our, with our eyes, and the spiritual kingdom that's won for us on the cross of Calvary. The millennial reign is just going to be a little bite of what we're going to get to have for eternity. The millennial reign is a thousand years of peace when there's no sin allowed. Isn't that going to be incredible? Yeah. I'm just going to love it whenever it can rain like crazy. And the, the cletus, the careless weeds, can't grow. Throw some seed out there and it comes up and ain't no weeds with this. No thistles. The Lord said, he tells Adam, he said, Adam, I got to tell you, because of your sin... I told you, don't touch it and don't partake of it. But because you did, there's going to be thorns 
And how many's ever heard of these things? Thistles. There's going to be thorns and thistles. I was looking at this the other day around my horse pen. There's thistles coming up around there. I hate them things. I kill them with the... Yeah. They're not going to get to grow during that time. <laughs> Isn't that going to be amazing? The Lord talked about one tree that bear 12 manner of fruit. You just walk around, eat an apple, orange, a banana. Come on now. Yeah, he made us. He made us eaters. Is it going to be good? Yes, it's going to be wonderful. I remember my dad-in-law, Brother Ernest Hollis, and I'm, I'm closing with this. We're getting, you can get ready. You understand if you want to. I can tell you this about to, about to spaz out on me. <laughs> what about this kingdom that can't be taken down? Woo! It's going to be worth it all, isn't it? He told my dad one time, he said, Bear, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He loved pears. He had a big pear tree in the back of his yard. And he, he, he had, uh, in high jumping when he was 16, he broke his right ankle. His family did have, had nothing, had no money. And they never took him to the doctor. And so that ankle, because it was broken, it got osteomyelitis in it, which eats up the joint, the bones. And what it did, it ate those, the bone structure up that would have been mobile. And when it healed, it healed just like a clump. And so his foot stuck down like that and his heel was about that high off the ground. He lived his whole life from the time he was 16 just because they didn't have no way to get to the doctor. It wouldn't have cost $10 probably to have fixed it. But I'm just telling you, they didn't have $10. They didn't have 10 cents. Anyway... His whole life, he, he was uh, crippled like that. He worked, I mean, made a good living all that his whole life. He never slowed down, but you know, you can imagine the pain that was, with, that was with that. But I'm telling you that to tell you this. Out from under the temple, on the east side, runs the river of life. And right beside it is that tree that bears 12 kinds of fruit. And he, he told my daddy, he said, Bear, I'm going to sit down on the edge of that river, close enough to that tree where I can dangle my feet off in that water and just reach up there and get me one of them pears and just enjoy it. And you know what? That foot is going to be working the next time we get to see him. It's going to be all right. You know why? Because the kingdom we're headed to, friends, is not hooked to this body that we know, we've got something that's going to last forever and ever and ever. So lift up your heads because your redemption draweth nigh. And know that whatever it takes for us to get to heaven, we're going to get the same. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Yeah, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be good. These altars are open. Would you like to come in tonight and say, God, thank you that you give us a kingdom that hell can't destroy. Whatever happens to America, we're going to heaven. Amen. Woo! Yes. Amen. In the name of Jesus.